Hello, I'm Jeff Barr. Today I'm speaking with Sandy Carter, Vice President of Windows on AWS. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me today. All right, so it sounds like our customers are finding some great value in migrating to AWS. What are some of the ways that they're actually going ahead and saving money? Well, one of the interesting things that customers can do is let's say that they've already purchased those Windows licenses, like many customers have. They've purchased perpetual licenses, so the license is really theirs. If they want to bring that license over to the cloud, they can take advantage of our BYOL, or bring your own license. Uh, and that's a really great way to really get started as well, because you're now not worried about the license cost, you're just looking at your compute storage and networking cost. So customers are doing that. SQL Server bringing right over to the cloud and running that as a bring your own license as well as Windows Server, both work uh, equally as well. The other thing that we're seeing is um, as customers are bringing the workloads over from the cloud, many are unsure about how to really optimize those. So uh, I think you even wrote a blog on it. We purchased a company called TSO Logic, mm -hmm. and TSO Logic enables customers to optimize their licensing cost, as well as optimize the way they bring those workloads over. So it really enables a customer to get a nice dashboard to see not just how to do it generically, but how to do it for their workloads, how to bring those over to the cloud. On average, TSO has helped to optimize customers' workloads by about 36%. Now that's on average. People like Golden uh, Foods have gone up to 81%, so your mileage could vary. Uh -huh. um, but the thing I love about it is it's customized to you, to you as a customer, so you can really look at what you have. Okay, now are they also able to take advantage of unique AWS features, things like reserved instances and auto-scaling and maybe even spot instances, are those also contributors? Absolutely, they can take advantage of um, spot. We have spot for Windows, one of our fastest growing areas actually, uh, as well as RIs and basically anything that we do for Linux, we do for Windows. We call Windows a first class citizen because uh, every basically everything that we can do for Linux, we do for Windows as well. Uh, including migration assistance, right? So if you're really looking to migrate over, we can help you do that migration. We've just purchased another company called Cloud Endure. If you're okay with having an agent and help you get that migration done, or we have other ways you can do it too if you're public sector using another tool without an agent on it to help you migrate as well. Tell me a little bit more about the whole migration process. What are we doing to help our customers to, to succeed there? Yeah, so there's a couple of things, um, depending upon how you define migration. So some customers, as they're moving from SQL Server on-premises to SQL Server in the cloud, they also decide that they want to run SQL Server on Linux. So we do have a re-platforming tool that can help you as a customer understand what you can bring over and what you can't. Because everyone knows that SQL Server on Windows is only about 70% compatible with Linux. So there are some workloads that you're not able to bring over. So we can help you figure out which of those workloads won't come over, which ones will come over really easily so that you can get started. In fact, one customer I was just working with, they've just purchased a bunch of companies and all of their acquisitions run Linux with AWS. So they've been running SQL Server on Windows and they were like, I'm never moving to Linux. But now that they've seen all these other acquisition companies that they have, they're like, hey, we're ready to try it. But we're not quite ready to give up SQL. So we're helping them right now uh, with SQL Server on Linux. Interesting, so there's a whole kind of spectrum or rainbow, if you will, of different ways they can bring their workloads over and, and run them. That's right. Okay, so as, as our customers bring their Windows workloads to AWS, they get comfortable, they get settled in, they're up and running, they're in production. What do they do next? So um, a lot of customers, once they move those workloads over to the cloud, their builders get really comfortable with the cloud. And so they're looking for, okay, what am I gonna do now? Um, so in particular for SQL Server, we're seeing some customers that say, I wanna run a, with a database that was built for the cloud. And so they're taking the step to migrate or modernize those SQL Server workloads with Aurora. Uh, Aurora gives you a lot of agility. There's a lot of things you can do in Aurora that you can't do with a traditional database. And so Aurora gives them all that flexibility as well as reduced cost. I mean, you and I know it's about a tenth of the cost of what you run with SQL Server. Um, but most customers, it's really not just about the cost. It is about all the agility and the extra things you can do uh, as, you're, as you're going to a new database. Now, a new trend that we're starting to see is customers who are using .NET. So 
Um, .NET Framework is kind of the old framework for .NET, and a lot of customers have been going to .NET Core because it supports both Windows and Linux. Mm -hmm. Microsoft just made a big announcement about .NET 5, which means that .NET Framework will be going away and everything will be built with .NET Core, but also using Mono and some other cool tools that you before could not use because they actually weren't blessed. Uh, and that has really triggered a lot of customers coming us to us saying, can we take .NET Framework and move to Core so that we can go to containers, Linux containers in particular, or so that we can execute on serverless? And the big question that we're helping customers with there is, what does a container strategy look like? I mean, I've had so many customers who just want help with that. We actually do have a special offer right now that we're doing with ProServe where we come in and we'll actually help you as a customer set your container strategy. So how do you get from .NET to a container? And what does that strategy look like? Like what's your end game? Um, which has been really helpful and has really good pickup and really good traction. Really today. interesting here that where you get your workloads over and then I expect the developers look at all these other facilities they have, and they say, "Wow, we, we can we can get to serverless, we can get to Aurora, we can get to a container-based model, but they can do it at their pace and as they develop the skills and the comfort with with all those different technologies." That's right. It's really interesting because we were the first uh, cloud vendor to support serverless with PowerShell and .NET. We support Kubernetes with Windows, containers with Windows. We have a machine learning AMI. So really, all of the new cool tools are now available for Windows on AWS. That's awesome to hear. So tell me a little bit about some customers as they go through this migration and uh, modernization model. Yeah, well, one of, uh, one of my favorite stories is ZocDoc. So ZocDoc is a startup. I guess they're not a startup anymore because they've grown so big out of New York City. And what they do is they serve and booking appointments for doctors. They do about 6 million patients every month to schedule mm -hmm. those doctor doctor's visits. They went 100% in on AWS in less than 12 months. So here's kind of what happened. Their, their builders, they were a startup, they knew .NET. So they built their entire application as a monolithic .NET application. As they grew, it couldn't scale. Or when they had to scale, it cost a lot of money because they were hitting, like for one little uh, application, they were hitting the whole monolithic application. And so what they were able to do is they were able to re-architect the .NET application. They broke it into a set of microservices, and then they were able to containerize it, which as a result, they've now been able to, to really deploy some of the machine learning models that they've also um, helped them to optimize their, their business. So it's really interesting, I don't know if you knew this, but 30% of a doctor's time is wasted because of cancellations. I didn't it's know that, crazy. and that actually explains why I always get the reminder emails and texts and so forth beforehand. So it's really interesting with the you know shortage of doctors and everything, this is such a great service. So what they're able to do now is not just scale up based on volume, but they're also able to be more productive. So they told me that their developers, their builders, are now 30% more productive than they were before and they're able to process so many more um, um, appointments than they were before as well because of the scalability of what we provide. That's great so to hear. So it's really cool. Um, and then another, another uh, customer of ours is Decisive, and they, you know, thousands of trucking companies in the USA depend upon Decisive and their relationship management software to pick up and deliver packages on time, which I'm really interested in. Uh, and the platform connects manufacturers uh, to dealers, to commercial treating, trucking fleets, uh, it's used by about 40,000 people at 4,500 locations every day. So what they did is they had um, a whole set of SQL Server databases that were running in the cloud. And as we talked about earlier, as builders start to see that, they're like, wow, what else could I do? They were able to take all of those SQL Server databases and convert it into a single instance of Aurora. Amazing, That's right? Impressive. It helped them to add more customers quickly. They went to over 99% uptime going in on AWS, and every minute of downtime, as you and I know, represents lost revenue to the fleet owners and lost business to them. They doubled their development productivity by going to Aurora, and they now can provision those development environments in days, not just weeks, because of the agility of AWS. So we've got some great customers who are doing amazing things, you know, kind of getting everything over to the cloud and then modernizing it as they get comfortable with what they're doing. I really love those stories. Thanks so much for sharing.
Okay, so as as customers move over to AWS, what are the positive surprises that they find once they're there? Well, one of the first positive surprises they find is how great Windows workloads run on AWS. It's better performing, you know, two to three times better performance than what they had been getting before. Um, they're seeing the ability to innovate so they can bring in other services. And now they're on a single platform to run Linux, SAP, Oracle, whatever they have, everything is all together. Uh, one of the other surprises that customers find is a lot of customers have gone to Office 365 and they're surprised to learn that they can actually use managed AD on AWS. Managed AD is phenomenal. It allows you to do single sign-on, on-prem and in the cloud, supports all the different features because it's full AD in the cloud and is very secure. So our customers like Capital One and Mary Kay Cosmetics, they use the domain management system and the trust from Managed AD to do their business for identities. Um, and then finally, you know, last but not least, is just the, the fact that AWS does support hybrid cloud. So we have a tight partnership with VMware, and we have an offering called VMware Cloud on AWS. And that enables our customers who want to have a hybrid cloud scenario to be able to migrate their SQL Server workloads, as well as SAP and Oracle. They can migrate those over to the cloud with VMware Cloud on AWS. And then if they want to, they can vMotion them to the cloud and then back off the cloud as well. So customers are often surprised at how many choices we provide to them based on where they are in their cloud journey. That's excellent. Sandy, it's been really wonderful to speak with you and really appreciate that you're taking the time to, to do this. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff, I appreciate it. I'm Jeff Barr and thank you so much for watching. I've been speaking with Sandy Carter, Vice President of Windows on AWS.